Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and in this video we'll be discussing the different types of errors and warnings that can appear when programming in Java. When we talk about errors, there are three main types we are talking about. First, we have compilation errors. These are usually syntax errors and are picked up before the program is run. You may remember in a previous video where we ran a program in the command line. We used the command Java C, which compiled the program, and it's at this stage that compilation errors will be picked up. Secondly, we have runtime errors. These occur after the program is compiled and we are executing it. Thirdly, we have logic errors, or what we might refer to as bugs. This is when your program is not doing what you expect it to do, but still compiles and runs appropriately. The actual code you've written is logically wrong. We won't focus on these errors in this video, but we will focus on them further when we talk about how to debug your code in later videos. Let's take a look at some common types of compilation errors that can appear in a Java program, along with examples. First, whenever we finish a statement, we need a semicolon. If we start a new statement without a semicolon, the program itself will not compile. For example, in this code snippet here, we've missed a semicolon, and Eclipse gives us a red underline to show us that this will result in a compilation error. Another compilation error is when we use the wrong name for a function. Notice that I have misspelled system. We need to make sure we use the exact names, and Eclipse will help us out by underlining the function names or keywords, such as true or false, that we spell wrong. Notice though that if you create a variable and misspell the name or misspell the text inside a string, you won't get a compilation error. This typo is not an error to the Java compiler and won't affect the execution of the program. It does however mean that whenever you want to use the variable, you must use the misspelled version, so it's a good idea to double check your variable names and the strings you create for any typos. A third compilation error we get in newer versions of Java is a warning that we have left a variable uninitialized and we are trying to use it in the same method. This is useful as it prevents us from accidentally coming across null pointer exception errors in runtime. We will cover this error in the next section of this video. Another common compilation error is not having matching brackets. Here, I am getting an error saying syntax error on token, meaning the brackets are not matching. Although we don't have a lot of code here, the lack of proper indentation makes it hard to find where exactly the extra bracket needs to be added or removed. This problem would get a lot worse the more code we write. It is really important to maintain good indentation as you write code to make it easier for yourself to debug in the future. If, for whatever reason, you do find yourself in this situation, Eclipse has a cool trick where you can highlight all of your code with Command or Control A, and then press Command or Control I, and the code will auto indent for you. Now we can see which brackets we need to remove. Let's move on to runtime errors. These errors occur when we're running the program, but are different to logic errors in that they don't give us the wrong result, they completely stop the execution of the program. You might also hear them referred to as exceptions. First, we have null pointer exceptions. In Java, we have two main types of data types, primitives and objects. Primitives are the basic building blocks of our code and include ints, chars, floats, doubles, and booleans. There are a couple more, but these are the main ones we'll use in this course. Then there are objects. So far the main objects you may have come across in Comp1000 are arrays and strings. We'll be talking about objects in more depth as we progress in this video series, but let's take a look at how a null pointer exception can arise when we're using strings. In Java, null is a special value that means nothing. It's not the same as zero or an empty string, it's a separate value altogether. When we work with object references, if we don't initialize them, they are set to null by default. We covered that this error is caught in the compilation stage if it's all within the same method, but if we explicitly set the variable to null, the compiler won't stop us and we could encounter a null pointer exception. In this first line here, str has been initialized to null. So in the second line, when we try to call the length method on the string, it doesn't exist and we get a null pointer exception. We will be talking more about what null is in a later video and how to implement appropriate null checks when writing our programs to prevent these exceptions. You might wonder why we would ever set a variable to null on purpose, but sometimes we may need to for other purposes in our code, and it may also be a side effect of when we create objects that have other objects as attributes. This is something we'll cover once we move on to our classes and objects topic. You may also encounter array index out of bounds exceptions. In this case, we've created an array with three slots. You may remember that when we access items in an array, the first item is index 0. So if we try to access item of index 3, we are actually trying to get item 4. Because this array only has 3 items, this line results in an out of bounds error at runtime. 
Next, we have arithmetic exceptions. These usually occur when we do something like divide a number by zero. Here we've made x5 and y0, which results in us trying to divide by zero when we print out x divided by zero. This error will be less common, but it's good to know what this error means in case it appears when you're trying to execute a program. Another common error you might not have come across yet, but may have heard of, is the stack overflow error. This error occurs when we make too many function calls without any of the calls being resolved. It's a matter of taking up too much memory, so the program can't continue and must terminate. This is commonly something we encounter when we use recursion, which is one of the topics we'll cover later on. Let's talk a little bit about warnings. Warnings are issued by the Java compiler when it encounters code that may cause problems at runtime, but is not necessarily a syntax error, so won't prevent compilation. For example, with the null pointer exception we had previously, Eclipse provides us with a warning that the string may not have been initialized. Another common reason you may receive a warning is if you've imported a library and haven't used it. We haven't yet talked about imports or libraries, but just note this might happen accidentally if you're trying to use a function that isn't available and Eclipse tries to be helpful and import a library for you. If that happens, that won't stop the program from compiling or running and won't cause any errors. It's just good to be aware of these types of warnings for when they come up. In Eclipse, you can view any compilation errors, syntax errors, or warnings by opening up the problems view. This will list all of the errors and warnings in your code, along with their location and a description of the issue. By understanding and addressing these different types of errors and warnings, we can ensure that our Java code is correct and runs smoothly, or we will know what to fix when our code isn't working. You will encounter many other scenarios we might not have covered, but your IDE will give you clues about what is happening. In summary, if you see a red underline, hover over the error to see what the error is. If you see a yellow underline, this is a warning, which means your program will be able to compile, but it is worth checking what the warning is in case it is something you should fix. In the next video, we'll be looking at how we can trace the control flow of the programs we write, both manually and with the built-in debugger in Eclipse. See you there!